Just losing Good John afternoon. now. <laughs> and it is Lilia from Peel Scotland here. And with me today, also coming to the festival, Suze Kuhn from West Coast, West Coast Wuji. <laughs> Suze, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. How are you? Not to be confused with West Coast Waters. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, definitely not. <laughs> so, looking forward to it. Yes, it's very exciting. We're working on the <laughs> programme. We've got a phenomenal lineup of just amazing things for people to come and try. So, your um, speciality, and again, we've worked together quite a few times over the years. You help me at the community as well. So, um, would you like to tell? Because I was, I'm never really sure quite how yeah. you say it. it Qigong, Qigong, what's the right terminology? Qigong. Qigong. So can you tell yeah. us how yeah. people into Qigong and how, because I know you've done a lot of travelling with it and you've studied a lot. So tell us how that came about. How did you get into it? Uh, well, basically, I moved from central belt in Scotland over to the west coast and at the same time my teacher moved to Orkney, my Tai Chi teacher uh, and so I was feeling a bit like an orphan and I went to a, a festival called Tai Chi Caledonia which is a whole week of Tai Chi in, uh, in Stirling and they bring the opportunity to, to learn about um, different styles of Tai Chi and a lot of depth into the inner workings. Uh, so I went to Tai Chi Caledonia to see if there was anyone out on the West Coast that I could link up with and work with. Um, and guess what? Um, Roger Janke, a separate thing altogether. And it was his book, The Healing Promise of Chi, and his teachings. That was the one I did at Barmalach Chi and working with it. Um, so that was how I first of all started to think about Qigong as something separate from Tai Chi and then of course I had to find someone in this country to teach me and so I found a you're frozen there Oh, am I back? Ah, there, you're back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're back. Uh, so I was saying I went to uh, Sammy for two years to do his teacher training course. Ah, okay. And uh, it, was, um, it was a mind-blowing. And then, of course, you're a qualified teacher, so you've got to and share it. Uh -huh. The sound, I don't know, I keep losing you. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine, yeah. Sorry about this. No, there's nothing we can do uh, about it. It's living in good old Argyle, you just have to take the internet that's available. Well, that's so, yeah. true. And BT are. Um, they've got a call to register online, so I don't know whether that's part of the problem. Oh, okay, okay. So you, so you found a teacher, and then you learned. You, so you then, and then it was you, it came to you passing that on to other people and teaching. That's right. Yeah, and I found myself working more with um, groups of people. I think when I, when I was looking at all things Tarbert, I could see all these fitness teachers saying, 
are you coming to my class tonight? Because I don't know whether we'll have people to cover the cost of the hall. Yes. And I didn't want to be in that position. So um, I've been going to something called Fred Group, which meets in the Tal. Um, and that's literally what it sounds like. It's a friendship group for older people. Um, most of them live alone. Uh, they're coming out for they're coming out for tea and home baking and a blair. Uh -huh. But they get me as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. And I've been with them for several years now. And we just do a bit of exercise because of who they are. And there's people with strokes and MS and Parkinson's and you name it. Um, it's very inclusive. So we have people who can do all of the moves. And we've got people who do them holding onto a chair. And we've got people doing it completely sitting. And we just adapt so that everyone can do as much as they can. So that's been going for years now. I forget how many years. Um, and then I've also been asked to do a class in Skipness, which again is part of our well-being uh, funding thing that they've they've got over there. Yeah. And we do six week books there. And again, it's during the day, so it's a bit of people. And sometimes I feel as though I'm running two classes, but uh, it's, it's all based on the idea of the chi, the energy, the internal energy, using that to, to feed and nurture the bodies through the meridians. Yes. And also using the exercises to to get us moving and spelling toxins that are causing blockages in the natural flow. Yes, fantastic. So that yeah, and <laughs> sorry, that's how it works. Yes, yeah, and I think I mean one of the reasons I love it is that it is so inclusive, because you know there's so many people not able not even they, sometimes people can't sit on a chair for very long they have to be up and down so it's a lovely thing that you can do it on any position and you're also not going to feel um embarrassed because everybody else is doing it better for want of a better word uh, than you to their own limit yeah and i think <laughs> you want find it even with the breath work much as i love i've always liked high impact aerobics running, jumping around, loud music, <laughs> breathing, doing the Wim Hof breath work, but I'm really now enjoying the very slow, the very opposite of that, which again is just like, let's just take everything out and slow everything down. And obviously, I mean, a lot of what we do is working with energy as well. And I think there's, there's certainly a, in the West, it's like, well, you know, we're doing exercise to get slim or to lose weight or to burn calories or whatever, or to tone up. Whereas when you're at them, there's the, the gentleness or the perceived easiness of it can trip people up into thinking to not really understand how powerful it can be. That's true. Yeah. Yes. People are often surprised by how well they feel afterwards yes how calm and i usually start off a session with five minutes of just standing or sitting and slowing the breath getting rooted getting connected to heaven connected to earth mm -hmm. um and just taking time to tell yourself don't worry about what we're having for dinner tonight. Don't worry about somebody's birthday. Just be here. Just, this is my time. I'm yes. here to heal myself. And hold my energy comes in. Yes, and I mean... So we go into that at the beginning and the end. At the end, we have for this caring time 
yeah. And I think that, you know, the Meridian system, I talk a lot about that, talked about it all during the goddess gatherings, the kind of electromagnetic field, the chi, whatever, you know, there's different words that you can use it, just simply the energy from the body yeah. and around the body that I suppose in the West, we di- well, we didn't know really existed and we certainly didn't know we could move in certain ways to influence this energy as in what's coming into the body, what's been blocked. So it all fits in beautifully with the kind of way that we're going, which is a way, hopefully, (laughs) away from a whole lot of drugs and surgery into a much more gentle energy type of healing that doesn't do any harm and doesn't cause problems further down the line. So would you say as part of a preventative I mean, the thing is, you're not going to wake up and go, oh, you know, I can't be bothered doing Qigong. That's what's nice about it. You're not you, you're not going to talk yourself out of it because, you know, it's not <laughs> hard as in the traditional sense of like, oh, my God, I've got to go and, you know, do this crazy hard workout or a long run. You know, there's there's nothing unpleasant about it at all. It's simply finding the discipline to take the time to do it. That's right. And, you know, I've had my wobbles, I have to say. Um, was it 2019? I went to China and studied on the Mount Orudang Mountain for a month. And we began, we got up at six o'clock in the morning and we did a one hour of standing meditation. Just wow. standing. One hour. With your hands on that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sleeping. So um, the really the really strong people would be almost sitting down. Uh-huh. And uh, the first timers like would be standing quite high. But as you kind of got used to it and to breathe and to relax and get the hips and the pelvis and everything. Um, it it became easier, but it was still a big deal to do that for an hour. Then we had oh, breakfast, and then we went to the, the the rest of the school because it was a school, so there there were pupils there, and they had to do some school. Um, and then we did the standing meditation again for an hour, and we did some walking meditation, uh-huh. and then and then we had you know they were at school and then we had an hour of sit meditation and then some walking and then we had dinner and then an hour of stand so there was masses of this internal training yes um i brought him with me and it was revolutionary but i have to say Getting up, I mean, I, I was fine for the first two or three years, and then I think I, I caught a cold or something and wasn't feeling great. And that was the spiral, and I kind of got out of being able to get up in the dark in winter and just stand yes. for an hour. This um, is the thing, I told myself I was busy. <laughs> I'm so I started to drop it down to like 40 minutes and 20 minutes of Qigong. Uh-huh. And then even that went for a while. So um, it's the winter. It catches me. I think it catches all of us. And that's that's the reality. It's then picking up the good habits again and hopefully, and that's what will be great about having you at the festival. So tell us what you're going to do at the festival. What can, we, what can people expect? Um, well, we talked before about six healing sounds, which yes. is where we look at. Uh, I mean, and people do these sound baths and hear with sounds, uh-huh. um, but this is something people can do themselves because yes. we look at understanding unprocessed trauma how that happens and where it goes in the body Uh Um, so as with the all of the chinese um going exercise it's all based on the five elements 
and the five organs. So uh, we've also got the, the governing meridian, which is the sixth sound. <laughs> and, that, and we have six sounds which affect each of the organs. Uh -huh. And what I've done this before with people, for example, people who've got heart problems and they find the heart exercise really reverberates with them. So whether people have an issue with a specific part of their body that they know about uh -huh. or a part of the body that they don't know about, it, they're still going to feel it. Mm -hmm. um, it and whether the release comes immediately at the time or whether it's something that they feel two or three days later, uh -huh. it's just going to depend. Yes, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, we did a bit of that at one of the goddess gatherings, you know, the sound. And I mean, I'm, I just love, you know, the humming, the chanting and how it goes through the body. So I think, and also if you're looking at like, so I mean the liver, for example, which is really, we don't talk enough about our liver and <laughs> what we put it through and how we how it's got phenomenal regeneration capacity when we learn to love it and look after it and release all the energy from it. So I think, I, I think something like, you know, making sound, people can really, it's very practical, isn't it? Everybody can do it. You know, like meditation or visualisation, it's, you know, it's quite abstract and it's subjective, whereas something like making a sound um, is very, yeah. people can just copy that and just do it, even if they don't fully understand. And there's Sorry? There's a very simple movement, a very simple movement that goes with it. Brilliant, brilliant. So oh, well, that I am very, uh -huh. I'm very excited to learn more about that. So listen, we'll... Um, We'll leave it there because the sound's really not very great and I would rather get you back on when we've got okay. great sound. Um, and, but we'll see you at the festival and um, yes. and people can come and meet you. Are you going to be around for the weekend? Yes, I will be. I still don't know yet where you're going to put me or... You're going to be I'm in the marquee at the marina. Um, you're going to be in the marquee at the marina. Um, because there's plenty of room there Lovely. to move and um, you'll be getting the program Kirsten's working on it today so yeah Great. very exciting so thanks a million for your time and for helping with the festival yeah, um, talk to you really soon sorry about the sound but... no problem you can hear you you just have to be you know you just have to pay attention <laughs> okay thanks oh, so much Suze. Always. thanks Lilia